Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Zero to Sixty. He's David. I'm Andrew. And today we're in a Volvo. Yeah. Uh, 2010 XC90, the the big SUV. Uh, but not just a standard one. This one has um, been tuned or chipped by Polestar. Polestar. Now. In Australia, Volvos are not very common at all. In fact, you think of Volvo, you just think of old grandmother, I don't know, it's, it's just you, you don't link it to sporty at all. Polestar coming to Australia, I think in 2013, when they started the V8 supercar team. Uh, and I guess they're trying to dress up their image as a vehicle that's exciting to drive with a bit of performance. Um, and when we had the opportunity to do this, we thought we'd go and check it out and see what an older Polestar was all about. So this one, although it is the Polestar tune, it's also the upper spec model. Uh, it's a very, very well equipped car. Again, it's a seven year old vehicle, but compared it to the Prado, I think it's pretty much got everything except for the towing assist that the Prado had. Oh, it's got plenty of toys. Um, wicked 12, seat, 12 speaker stereo. It is the big seven seater. Um, it's got electric everything. And it's not just the gadgets that I like, but the, the feel, the quality, everything. Actually, everything does feel solid. The, I knew that this was a Pulsar Star Volvo, but when I first got to sit in it this morning, I didn't know what engine was in it, and I started it up, and I thought it was a V8. Just, it has a solid rumble, everything feels... It, I'll tell you what, this is the closest thing I've driven to a Range Rover. Okay, well, it's been... I haven't been in a, in a new era Range Rover, yeah. and the old ones were nice back in the day, but this, uh, you know, this highway speed, it's so smooth and quiet. Mm, it's a very, very nice place to be. Now for the standard XC90 from 2010, the power output is very similar to the Prado we had last week. I think it peaks at about 135 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque, which isn't bad. Well, like I said, it's pretty good, really. The same as a 2017 Toyota. Um, but the Polestar tune does obviously add a little bit of horsepower, not much, but apparently the difference is supposed to be noticeable in the torque, which is obviously, again, what you feel, and hopefully it might make a little bit of a difference to its zero to 60. I think it's, it's definitely going to be quicker than the Prado. Straight away, this car feels, it feels more, I said car, it's a four-wheel drive, but it feels like a car. Uh, the controls are very light, you don't feel like you're in a heavy vehicle. Uh, throttle is very responsive for a diesel four-wheel drive. Yeah, I'm telling you, it makes all the right noises, I can, you can hear the spool. Yeah, it sounds great. It's the 2.4 litre turbo diesel, so they are the five-cylinder, uh, which, everything I can find on the internet, they're quite a strong engine. Um, and yeah, I'm, Looking forward to seeing what it do. The standard, I think the official time was in the 11s, maybe high 11s, um, which feels achievable. Yeah, I, uh, I don't I don't know if it'll do an 11. I feel, well, actually, you know what, I'll tell you what it might do. It's not a 13, definitely not. Well, it's it's nearly a decade old, so it's not, It's even though it's got the chip, I don't think it's gonna be as fast as the, as the claim time anywhere in that ballpark. Look, if it can beat high 13s, that Prado last week was 13.8 or 13.9, I think. So if it can get, if it can get near there, awesome. All right, well, I think we're just about at the spot where we can uh, open her up a little bit and we'll see how it accelerates. Yeah, let's do it.
Well, we've done the time runs, and they were actually quite impressive, really. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned in the start of the video that the claim, or the factory time, when this when this car was dropped for the 2.4 was like 11.5 or something. said 11.5. So this, to do that 9.78 is pretty freaking impressive. That's, I mean, that's, all this car is, is the Polestar tuned version. There's no different exhaust, to my knowledge. Uh, same intake, everything is the same, it's just got a bit of a tweak on the ECU and it's pulled a couple of seconds off its, off its factory time and if anyone's followed the channel a lot, it is hard to do factory times out in the real world when a car's got a bit of mileage on it. Yeah, I'm seriously impressed and I'm not 100% sure exactly what the Polestar tune changes or how much it changes so you know, like trying to do a little bit of research before we have this vehicle and it seems to sort of focus on improving the MPG or yep. the economy um, and like increasing its sportiness a little bit but I think I, like on a Volvo forum somebody mentioned that it, it only shaves off 0.5 of a second and that was from its factory time which you get which when the car was brand new again nearly a decade ago so it's it definitely and there was no real talk about performance increases but it definitely, it definitely, and it feels, it, it feels sporty. Well, I've driven quite a few uh, six-cylinder petrol X5s. This motor feels way more sporty than uh, a six-cylinder petrol X5. And the gear changes. If you hold it flat, it's changing nearly five grand, which is ridiculous for a diesel. For a diesel, and it's so smooth. Normally, uh, you get anywhere near 5,000 RPM in a diesel, and it starts to feel like it's revving its brains out. But this, it feels so smooth. A very good all-round package. It's obviously safe, like Volvo's always are. It feels solid, it feels expensive. It's got so many toys. We didn't mention the aircon seats before. It's got aircon seats, which you don't see in cars very often at all. Yeah, it's, oh. a, it's a bit of a special feature, the aircon seats. And so, like in Australia, we love the aircon seats. All in all, it's definitely got me thinking differently about Volvos. Well, look, that's, that's the issue with Volvo, in, particularly in Australia. I don't know what, what it's like for the rest of the world. But there's sort of a stigma, like they're a. Just an boring, old, yeah, old boring person old person car or a yeah. safe car. Typical drivers. Well, I don't even think people understand how safe Volvos are in Australia. It's, yeah, like they're, they're just not loved, are they? They're not. No, um, it's a bit of a shame. Like, I, it blows my mind that Volvo invented the three-point safety belt and didn't want to patent it so that every manufacturer could use it for the benefit of the public. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, um, it's like I said before, it's been a bit of a change. If you've got a Volvo, let us know what you think of it. If it's been more than the safety prone, boring car, and if you do have some fun with it, I, uh, I want to get my hands on one of the newer Polestars. Oh, that would be awesome. And actually, if you are, um, I don't, mainly watched by guys in, in, in Australia, but if you are in the rest of the world, is it, is Volvo sort of got that stigma, you know, in your country as well? Is it sort of the old person's car a bit boring and all that sort of stuff. I'd be interested to know, so please comment below. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace.